You're listening to the After The Show Movie Podcast from ascully.com. Your weekly look at movies, video games, and more brought to you by your hosts, A. Scully and Sid Talk. We're addicted to movies. Are you? Good afternoon and welcome to the After The Show Podcast. Hello, Sid Talk. Hello. How are you doing? Well. Very well, very well. Oh, just well. You added the very. Oh, just well. Okay. <laughs> All right. So what have we been talking about before the show? So before the after the show discussion was a big topic brought on by this movie. You know? Yeah. <laughs> you know? That's kind of what this movie is about, it, isn't it? Mate? I think so. Discussion I think it's a movie. Yeah, I think it's a conversation starter. It's a what if. Yep. And that's what we were discussing. And I'm making a video of me planting some seeds and you are playing with your knobs and dials. Knobs and dials. Digital knobs and dials. That's true. <laughs> I don't have any actual dials. I do have a knob though. <laughs> All right. So this is After the Show. We're a movie review podcast. And every week we look at a new movie. This week on Saturday, March the 11th, episode 778, we look at the movie Knock at the Cabin. It's a 2023 movie, releasing on Blu-ray soon. You can watch it on streaming now. Rated R from our friends at Universal. Sid Talk, give us the synopsis of the movie, Knock at the Cabin. What if the the religions of the world and humanity have been correct and there is a deity in the universe that is wrathful and shitty? And it, how would that look in modern world to, for people to say, oh, I've seen visions, uh, I've seen this, I have to do this, or this deity will destroy everything, right? So that sounds like mental illness from the past. And so let's say, let's plunk it right in the reality of today and see how that would look. All right, I'll give you the real synopsis. All right. This one says, while vacationing, a girl and her parents are taken hostage by armed strangers who demand that the family must make a choice to avert the apocalypse. All correct. All correct. Yours is correct. Theirs is correct. Theirs is more succinct. It is, but mine's funner. All right, Knock at the Cabin. It's M. Night Shyamalama Ding Dong's newest movie. What did you think? I enjoyed it. I think it's gorgeous and everyone's amazing. I just, I got lost in the idea of, what do you think I'm going to say? You're going to say the actual choice given. You didn't really give a shit about it. I um, I did give a shit about the choice. <laughs> More like because it's M. Night Shyamalama Ding Dong, as we like to call him. We, we have respect for the man, but that's just what you've always said is his name. There is an element of where's the surprise, right? It's like going in a haunted house. If you've ever been in one of these like a haunted house at Halloween that like your local... Lions organization or somebody's put together, right? So it's an old house or they've built a bunch of plywood walls. And as you're going through it, you know, someone's going to jump out. There's going to be a chainsaw sound. There's going to be a strobe light that makes it look like somebody's coming up out of a coffin. You know, all of this. Yes. Preconceived so ideas. Right. But then when you get there and you still, oh, oh God, you know, you still like, oh crap. And you feel like escaping and you're your internal organs and your back of your brain all react the way they should yes. if that was real. So in an M night Shemalama Ding Tong movie, I feel like I'm going into a haunted house where I know there's going to be tricks and whatnot. I'm prepared for the twist or a big thing. And so I'm waiting and then I get out of the haunted house and I turn around. I'm like, you just had us walk through like a museum of death or whatever. Like a nor- I, nothing surprised me. Nothing scared me. Nothing jumped me out. Yeah, it was still fun and interesting, but I didn't get that. <gasps> oh my gosh, sensation! That is how I would describe it. Also, I felt like I figured it all out before it happened. Well, well, but we haven't we haven't zoned in on what the actual twist is yet. No, so uh, let's say there will be spoilers here. M Night Shyamalan's movies are full of twists and turns, so maybe you'd want to see it yourself first. Yeah, but if you don't care, just listen to what we say because we're correct. So there is a twist, kind of. 
No, I'd say there isn't a twist. All right, there isn't a twist. What you see is what you get. What is on the tin is what is inside. It's just the question in your head about what's really going on. Just like with any thriller, right? Yeah. Even Knives Out, you're like, oh, ho, 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 whoa. What's the, what are the clues here I'm supposed to be yeah. figuring stuff out? Because you're expecting something from Knives Out too, aren't you? You're exactly. expecting a clever like, manipulation of the situation, which I was here too. And there was lots of things in my mind the entire time, which were almost distracting me from what, you know, the actual movie. Because I was like, oh, I think this is this. Or maybe this is this. If it's cool, it'll be this. Oh, no, it's not that. So yeah. you're interacting with the movie. Yeah. So it's a good thing. You're engaging. I mean, it, yeah, it's all to do with preconceived ideas. You've seen M. Night Shyamalan's provided you with really cool twists in the past. So you're kind of expecting them every time, which you shouldn't, because he should be able to do whatever he wants, right? Absolutely. And this one, I don't think, contains a good enough hook. Let's not call it a twist. Let's call it a hook for this one. I believe the poster gives it away. Have you, have you seen the poster? Let me look. Let me look. I believe that post is too much. Yeah, there's like a cabin. Let me just describe it for you listeners who are not looking at the same picture. There is a field and there are four people with what look like very deadly weapons. We're almost in silhouette of them. And in the background is a cabin and overhead is a doomsday looking sky. Like, yeah. And uh, is there anything else in the sky that we might spoil? I don't see. Well, any. those words. <laughs> oh, I didn't. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right. There are words in the sky. Even without the words, you're like, oh, okay. Something bad's going to happen. Yeah. I mean, we know this. This and, part we know. And four people with four different colored shirts and four melee weapons of different guises. I wouldn't have noticed the shirts. I think you're only saying that because they mentioned that in the movie. Well, it all to me, that poster strikes me as, oh, it's that. So what is that? Well, we're spoiling big time here because this yeah. is M. Night Shyamalan. Let's just go for it. They are supposedly, see, I have a cynical mind, <laughs> so I still can't get behind the idea, but they're supposed to be the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Yes. But there are no horses, just so you know, though, we, we weren't quite so straightforward. No horses and two of them are women. Correct. So they're the horse people with no <laughs> horses. They're just the people. Of the apocalypse, the four people. So we had to rewrite all of the texts <laughs> yes. that have ever been written that someone had a vision of the four bringers of doom. Let's call them that. Oh, that's better. Yeah. I think I need to start writing a novel. <laughs> so personally, I liked how this movie was filmed. I especially liked, and I think it's exceptional, the opening sequence where Dave Batista meets um, Wen in the forest. Yes, it was and very just, creepy and interesting. Yeah, it's like a seven minute, like they just talk to each other. The camera's really close in their faces. Yes, I love that. And it makes you, and the camera also, if you notice, it starts going crooked slowly. And it makes you feel off, like the whole thing makes you feel, oh shit, this is doomed. But I don't think the rest of it has that intensity, which that had. I felt like it got, it went milder the further it went. Also, there are deaths in this movie, but you never really see anything. I kind of like that, actually. Did you? I feel like that was my, one of my favorite things. About I wanted to see some brutality or something. You definitely need the violence in this movie because you have to believe that these people are serious. Right? Yeah. They can't just tell you what they're going to do and never do anything. So you have to see them do something. So you're like, okay, this is real. So let's, is let's lay out what they're doing. Okay, so they're postulating. They come to the door, they get in, they tell the two, um, the couple and the child, you've been chosen. We are here to make you make a choice. Right. You have to choose one of you to sacrifice and then the others have to kill. One of you has to kill that person. Right. That's the premise. Yep. The reason you have to do this is to save all of humanity from Armageddon. So Armageddon is a very specific thing outlined in many religious texts. It is combined of things like plague, the sky falling. Michael Bay, Armageddon. Michael Bay, Armageddon. The plagues, natural disasters, and humanity falling under like a, a sky of fire. Okay, so that's kind of the basics. That's the religious rundown of, a, of Armageddon. If you don't do this sacrifice, this thing will happen. So then every... They give them 24 hours. They make a choice. When they say, no, we're not going to sacrifice each other. One of these apocalypse people, one of these doomsday people has to be 
dispatched yes. by the others. And when they go, they say a part of humanity or a portion or some part of humanity has been judged, which was another question mark I had. Because each time they say a part of humanity has been judged, but we make no, uh, nobody says like, oh, it's all women or all men or all people on Africa or all people on America or all people who are tall or anything. There's no, but I, so I didn't grasp that concept very much. So then we did it. We dispatch with them because our couple keeps saying, no, we're not sacrificing each other. You're just lunatics. Yes. The, you are crazy. You are delusional. And then they turn on the news in very, very cl- specific times to show there's an earthquake and a tidal wave and a, well, a plague or a disease that's killing a bunch of people all of a sudden shows them this, like you chose no. So now this is happening. You chose no again. Look at the news. So that's the scenario. And now the, now you're being pressed with what looks like evidence question mark. Yeah. Looks like evidence, but the lawyer dad is like me, like, no, do you, this is all bullshit. You've made it up. It's all fake. You have no evidence. This is not proving anything to me. We're not doing this. You're delusional. Something's wrong with you. Right. So each time this happens, they're trying to convince them more and more. They have no evidence from the world, though. No one's calling just, them. Just, um, yeah, just TV broadcasts. Correct. We're not seeing anything yet until nearly the end. When it is like completely like, yes, this is happening and it's real. Right. See, you've just told the twist uh, that should have surprised people. The twist people. that is not a twist because it <laughs> literally what they're telling you is is what's happening. Right, because you're convinced throughout it that because they're convinced because they're uh, two men who are married and have a daughter that they're being targeted. It's like a gay bashing thing, you know, and so they're convinced. Well, the one guy is convinced that it's that and that they've plotted against them. So throughout you, then you start going, oh, well, we have some actual. Okay, we have a reason to doubt these people because even we don't see any anything. We just we don't see them in their previous life. Right. We didn't see them coming together. No. They all claim they had a vision, the same visions, and then they found each other and they're all strangers and all that. So I feel like you just saying like, oh, and in the end, it's all really real. That's supposed to be the big shocker. It totally is. There's a moment in the movie where they like pull back the curtain, let's say, and explain explain that it's real. And I, I think you're supposed to be like, oh, but I wasn't. I was like, well, yeah, I knew this like 90 minutes ago. So that's where it didn't work for me. Like, I just knew it was that. Did Unfortunate. You? Yeah, I mean, you were probably on the same page, right? Uh, like, yes. I had no reason to believe it wasn't that. Let's say it goes the other way, and they're just four lunatics. What's, what kind of story is that? Also, well, I mean, that's, that's an acceptable... It's the inverse of this story. The inverse? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I get you. So this had no, it had no impact for me. Uh, like old, the one we watched, the last M. Night Shyamalan movie, I think that was along the same, like it wasn't satisfying. When you get to the end of it, you're like... Oh. Let's not spoil that one, but yeah. But you're like, okay, fair enough. Uh, it's not, I don't know, it may be not enough uh, like cleverness for me. Well, I don't know. Are you being jaded? Are you? Are we doing the preset? Like I'm preset to expect a thing, so my expectations. I mean, it's exactly higher? that, isn't it? You you're wanting something next level that you're going, holy shit! Like the end of the Matrix. Spoilers. <laughs> Which isn't that big a deal. So let, don't let him oversell it. Not that no, big but deal. it's when you're watching it for the first time, you're like, oh, ugh. or maybe like early M Night Shyamalan movies. Or one, let's say one, only one of them has actually rattled. And some people claim that they weren't even rattled by that. But you mean um, Sixth Sense? Yes, and we're not going to spoil it. In case I you also seen believe it. Um, it didn't work for you, but it did for me. And that's The Village. It's not that it didn't work. It's just that I knew immediately from uh, just the For some vibe reason, of it. I had no idea on that one. And it right. Really- I didn't know the whole of it, but I was like, hmm. Yeah. Okay, I know this is what's going on, but I don't know how the... I had one of those moments in that movie, though, where I was like, holy, what? And that's good, yeah. uh, That's kind of what I But then, like, Lady in the Pond, or whatever. Lady in the Water. Lady in the Water. It was a pool, wasn't it? It wasn't a pond. Didn't really... No. But then, the thing is, (laughs) is it false? 
it's setting up a false expectation of this person, this director writer, to yeah. now fulfill my I agree expect my demand that there be a moment when I'm just like wah and I, I believe he should be able to do what he wants and we shouldn't expect anything. So it's going to take a while. Yeah. So I was dissatisfied with the story. I also there's things I don't like about this movie and it's um like the staged uh, tsunami mm. um sequence. I thought it looked stupid and uh <laughs> It, it didn't convince me in any way that that looked real or anything. And then there's another one later with planes and stuff falling out of the sky. What else was it? Um, so you're just talking about visual effects. Just visual effects. Um, and they've done that before. In the Happening is one. Oh, The Happening, also um, unsatisfying. Remember? Um, I didn't dislike it as much as everyone else. But the twist is unsatisfying, even it's if not, you like it. It doesn't the, even feel like a twist, does it? No, it doesn't. <laughs> Which is the same as this, right? Yeah. Because I I believe you would have to, I don't know, to not get what this is telling you before the ending. I think you weren't paying attention, right? Or you don't know. I mean, there are going to be people in the world who are not familiar with the concept of the four horsemen. Yeah. I mean, maybe. Maybe. I mean, I'm totally 100% non-religious person, and I'm very aware of that. Because you've seen, you've, the story's been told to you before, right? Absolutely. I mean, uh, many times. So I said to you, it felt a bit like, if you like, the um, the Twilight Zone. Maybe the new Twilight Zone that Jordan Peele did. Maybe an episode of that. That's how it kind of felt to me. You right, know? but a new version would be that benevolent, male- malevolent, which would be bad. <laughs> Easy for you to <laughs> the say. The malevolent deity that everyone's afraid of and then does do this shitty thing. Say so they exist and they're doing this shitty thing by scourging the earth. If it was a new modern day Twilight Zone, though that element of I have chosen a group of people to be purged or whatever right. would actually be the thing, right? Everyone who's of one thing, every blonde person on the planet all of a sudden is what's your one of your favorite shows? The la- uh, not The Last of Us. I mean, yes, that, but The Leftovers. They just all disappear. Yes, the leftovers. Like, if that was the new modern twist, it would be, yes, it's okay to pick on a whole group of people, because look, your deity does it too. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> and if you all want to pick on them so much and hate the, hate on them so much, fine. We'll just make them all disappear. Now, now you all make a happy ending. Yeah. So overly for me, well made, definitely well shot and acted. Yeah, gorgeous. And... There was a bit of dialogue I found a bit like exposition man dialogue. There's mm-hmm. a bit of that that was a bit annoying. To, you I know? didn't find that. Felt but... a bit unnatural. Like we literally got to tell you some things there. So here it is. I also, you know, I didn't gel with the ending. This is based on a book. It isn't M. Night Shyamalan's story. Right. So this book already exists. The book has a very different ending to this, which I just read the ending of the book. And the ending of the book is much more down my street. You know? Yes, you did tell me the ending, and I agree. I was like, hmm. Yeah. Visually, that would be interesting. It would be more of a kick in the gut. I mean, but so you, we're not saying you have to go read this book, but if you want that ending or look it up, I guess. But it's, it seems more satisfying to me. And then I went somehow. and looked why he didn't go with the ending for the book and just make the book as it was. And he said he wanted to be more hopeful. That was his comment. And I would have to have a sit down with Mr. M. Knight because... I don't feel like this is a hopeful ending. I feel like it's super tragic. Yeah, because <laughs> lots of people. Lots of people died. How many? Yeah, How and also amount. now you are you are in this fictional world saying there is some being out there in the universe. That controls everything. That's willing to do this. And then you're postulating in a flash forward with one of the dads and the daughter that you're going to be happy in the world. I mean, I didn't look in the background of that future vision of the world. There could have been some weird clues, but it again, just looked regular. Yeah. But that's now we're all just go on about our business until the next time. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe that's the sequel. <laughs> yeah. You know, gray haired dad and daughter, grown up daughter. And then there's a knock at the apartment door. It's called knock at the apartment. It's just the same thing again. Oh, my God. Well, that's what <laughs> one could argue. That's what sequels are all about. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
hey, that's your twist. It's just a sequel. It's the same thing again. And you go to the theater, but it's actually the same movie. They've renamed it, yeah. made a new poster. And when you go to, to watch it, it's actually There's a twist. This- <laughs> there you go. Or it's a highlight reel of all M. Night movies. That's it. <laughs> that's that's the new movie. And you had no idea till you get there. All right, let's get on to the cast. Dave Batista plays Leonard. He's the for me the highlight of the movie. He's fantastic. He's in this really movie. good. He makes me very nervous and very sad and compassionate all at the same time. Yeah, it's amazing how many things he can pull off. When he plays Drax, he's kind of funny and intense. But when he this guy, also the guy he played in Blade Runner, do you remember? That guy was kind of intense, but uh, but um, emotional. No, I don't remember that. But it, he is really. I think he really pulled this off. Like I was, he did because I was convinced completely of his character. So his character is, as he describes to them, a second grade teacher. He coaches what look I think it was baseball or basketball of the young kids, you know, and he really is broken up about this thing that he's been called to do. Like it's really breaking his heart. Yeah, and yeah. I believe that. See, this is the thing. I can dislike a premise of the whole of the movie twist situation, but that is convincing that a person could be so convinced, even in real life, this is fiction, but of a thing. That they have to do a thing. Yes, that they cannot. And I felt like he represented that person. And I was like, I can see that actually happening to people. And so him selling me on that. I think that's amazing. I feel like it's worth watching the film to see his performance. Oh, my. I feel like his performance is greater than the film. Right. So we've also got Nikki Amuka Burge. She plays Sabrina. She's like the nurse in this one. The uh, the four apocalypse people uh, have different professions, right? Correct. Uh, what did you think of Sabrina? Really good. Also terrified of what she's doing. But giving over to that she is convinced completely while she still is tapping into that, like, I just really care about you. And she's one guy gets his head bashed and she's still tending to him, even though the possibility is there that if these three family members choose to sacrifice one of us, he's going to be he could be the one. She's very tentative, very attentively making sure he's okay and tending his wound and all of that. And so I was, and she was very, very, very sad when she's telling about herself. I mean, I was convinced all of them are good. I'm going to say the same thing about all of them. Yeah. We've got Rupert Grint as Redmond. Rupert's from um, Harry Potter, right? It's Harry Potter. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I thought he was good. He's not in it for very long. So don't come to it for the Rupert Grint show. (laughs) And Abby Quinn was the other one who plays Adrian. She was a, what was her profession? He's a chef. Chef. Well, a, a, line, diner, cook. In a, a diner. line cook. Yeah. And yeah. he was really good too because he's, they're supposed to represent different aspects of humanity, right? Like wrath. Yeah. So he's like the angry criminal, potentially. I mean, he's been a criminal in the past and he's very angry and he's very impatient. And yet he is also convinced this thing has completely taken him over as well. So I feel like he did a really good job. And I don't know. I don't watch a lot of the Harry Potter stuff. I've seen like the first one and maybe a bit of the second one, maybe. So what's his name? Weasley, Ron Weasley is Ron, who it yeah. is. If you don't know the Harry Potter world, but I was convinced he was that guy too. Every single one of the women who's the line cook, when she's got her eyes welling up and they're zooming right in on her. I was just like, my God, like she's breaking my heart. <laughs> and then we've got the family. Jonathan Groff is Eric. Ben Aldridge is Andrew and Kristen Q is when. So it's a same sex couple with an adopted daughter, right? Yeah, I don't know if that's relevant, but sure. I mean, it's I mean, it's supposed, the, it is relevant. It's in relevant the in the story, yeah. as in the one character sees this whole scenario as being based on them being a same sex couple. Exactly. But in terms of like the idea of it, it doesn't matter. It could be anybody is being chosen for. If if we're going by what the movie's saying that it's real, then none of that is it matters at all. The IMDb uh, review people are going to say they've inserted this to make it woke, aren't they? I don't know. I don't know what the book said. Yeah, I don't know either. Yeah. All right. So I am talking of IMDb reviews. This is directed by M Night Shyamalan. By the way, we've talked about him. Six Sense, Old, Unbreakable. Can you name any others? The Last Airbender. Glass. <laughs> Glass. 
beast or whatever the one you like split split <laughs> i think why do i always call it beast every Unbreakable single time. split and then glass it yeah. was a trilogy yeah yeah oh after earth with uh that was written by gary witter after earth hmm. it's not very good wait a minute after earth is the one with the young man going all over earth that's been devastated right uh, that's m night Shyamalan? will smith's son yeah yeah yes but i'm saying the character his dad's to- like uh, injured in the ship and he has to go out of the right? crash ship. That's M. Night Shyamalan? That was M. Night Shyamalan. Yeah. Wow, I guess I never knew that. That was him doing something that was not like what he normally does, I guess. Because it wasn't anything like I like him. to confuse that one with Another Earth. Oh yeah, that, that, Another <laughs> Earth's really good. Yeah, I, I like know. that one. <laughs> Alright, so IMDB reviews, what are those? Those are reviews that people put on the IMDb instead of making their own clever, intelligent, very listenable podcast, which is more than one sentence long. So they go on here and they cheat by typing like one sentence, like worst movie ever made. Waste of my time. I left halfway through. (laughs) Things like that. All right. Number one says a knock in the head. Let's face it. At this point, Shyamalan has been a hack for over a decade. This movie isn't esoteric. It's not misunderstood. It's not unique. The only thing unique is the fact that it was produced rather than simply throwing this pathetic screenplay into the furnace. That's it. Right on. (laughs) (laughs) Um, No, I don't agree with that. I'm sorry. I'm right on as in that sounds like waste of time. Second one says. This movie never should have been made. This one says, oh my God, how is this ridiculous D grade movie got financed is beyond me. Is there a race to the bottom for M. Night Shyamalan? Four folks show up at a gay couple's cabin to inform them that they must choose somebody or to sacrifice in their family. They have a little girl. The whole film is them talking to this couple. It sucks. That's that one. That's why it sucks. That's interesting. And uh, thirdly, this guy says, don't waste your money. Don't watch this unless you want to fall asleep. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Sucks horrible. Don't watch this movie. It's the worst movie. It makes zero sense, and I wanted to die. Oh, my. We haven't. Ooh, have we had that one as a result? <laughs> oh, my goodness. That did evoke something in that person. So, so those are the IMDb re- reviews. We didn't see any um, extras, but there will be some when the Blu ray comes. So, Sid Tar, let's give this movie a score. I'm going to give Knock at the Cabin a. Six out of ten. Ooh, I'm giving it a 6.7 because I do points. Yes, you do. You don't, I do. I don't. I know. I'm more harsh. And I'm more forgiving? That can't be right. Correct. (laughs) That is not accurate. (laughs) (laughs) Well made. Just didn't really appeal to me, the actual crux of the whole thing. But it did to me, you see. I feel like it's well made. The idea and the question that you could ask, what if... I like the question. What if... It's all real, right? Just to be very clear, once again, if you've listened to many of our podcasts, you'll know I don't believe in anything at all, like nothing. I'm at, I'm at complete neutrality, right? And I'm sure people just, that makes their skin crawl or they want to change my mind or they want to show me all the evidence. That's fine. So the question is, and I like the question, what if it is all real? What if there is the deity, the thing, the creator, the whatever, and this is a game they can play with us? Correct. That at any moment in time, make their presence known with a question of why would you pick on one person? Like, for example, Abraham. I don't fucking know, right? I don't know why. But so that's that opens up the question. If it was real, how would it look now? If you brought, then that leads me to another question, which may, is very interesting. So what if you did bring back your Jesus Christ person to modern day world? The real deal. Let's say it's the real deal. How would that look? Family Guy does it pretty well. (laughs) Right. But of course, he's making fun of it. So I wouldn't want to make fun of it. I like the idea of really putting it in real life terms. That that interests me. So I, I, I like it for that. And it looks gorgeous. And everybody's great. And it got me interested in the question. And I I need to learn to not have the expectation of Mr. M. Knight. All right. Thank you to Universal. Next week, we're going to look at the movie Infinity Pool. Have you heard of this one? Infinity Pool. I've seen, oh, I've seen Ponty Pool. <laughs> ah, 
That was an older movie. That was. Infinity Pool is Brandon Cronenberg's new movie. He made Possessor last year, if you remember. Okay, now it's sounding more familiar. So that's his new movie. It's starring Mia Goth from uh, X and Pearl. So movie recommendations. I am going with, I haven't put any down, but I'm just going to pull some out of my head. Oh, gosh. The Sixth Sense, clearly the best of um, M. Night Shyamalan's movies, right? And let me go for a Dave Batista movie. Well, it's not a Dave Batista movie, but he is in it. And it's Blade Runner 2049. Amazing movie. Okay, I don't remember him in that, so I don't know. What He's in the very I... opening sequence. He has a fight. Um, our hero, Ryan Gosling, has a fight with him. Oh, I don't remember. <laughs> well, I'm dismissing it quickly because I don't remember. And my recommendations are me in 2023 going back to the beginning of this millennia uh, and looking at science fiction only. So, again, people will dislike my take on this movie, but it's a bit of science fiction without the science. Like, OK, we'll skip over that part. I'm sure people will hate that. But. I'm going, I'm up to 20, 2007 with I Am Legend, which we actually saw a movie with Vincent Price, Last yeah, Man did. on Earth, on the Scream channel or whatever it's called. Same character, same scenario, just met Last Man on Earth a little while back. And then The Invasion, I don't remember which one that is. I do, it's Nicole Kidman. Oh, okay, right. Yeah. Not great, but it's science fiction and it's from this millennium. Transformers, science fiction. Robots in disguise. <laughs> I like it. Uh, Cloverfield in 2008, which is one of my favorite science fiction movies. I won't give away anything. Don't say anything. It's just, I really liked it. Uh, uh, the shaky cam I could live without, but I love that it is what it is. Day of the Dead, which from 2008, so that would be the... Remake? That you like, right? Day of the Dead? Yes. And then uh, that's it. Oh, the next thing is Larry David Pasta. That's not a movie. That's what we're having for supper. Nice. <laughs> but if it was a movie, I would watch it. Because <laughs> I love anything with Larry David. Larry David Pasta. The movie. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be excellent. I can see the poster now. Yeah, it looks just like the bag of pasta that we have exactly. in the fridge. <laughs> so Ace Scully stuff. I uh, finished Marvel's Midnight Suns this week. Took me 54 hours of going to the PlayStation um, counter Four hours of your life what a great game that was i would i would give it a nine out of ten and recommend it to anybody you have to like marvel superheroes socializing with each other and then going out and kicking ass so it's it's very specific and it's a strategy game like if there's a game called XCOM, it's made by the same people who made that if you like that kind of thing pick it up it's amazing and the other thing is, this week I uh, noticed that Resident Evil Village, which is the latest Resident Evil game, had been reduced uh, down to $20. And I already had like $10 of Amazon credit, so I got it for $10. I haven't got it yet, though. I'm waiting for it to be uh, delivered. But that'll be the next game I play, Resident Evil Village. Beautiful. Sid Talk, what is your advice? Uh, so we're skipping over dinner. because We now already we said it. For dinner. My advice is advice. It is an observation. We, I'm human, so I'm going with humans here. We humans, we diminish each other. You know, just you marinate in that word, look it up, whatever. Do we diminish each other to amuse ourselves and other people like us, quote unquote, because it validates whatever it is we think or believe around the, about the world, why our own kind, and I'm doing quotation marks, deserves to control it. Right? We diminish people because it convinces us that we have more power, more credibility, we have more value than them, whoever them is, right? It's just what we do. Is that it? That's it. All right. <laughs> well. For you to pause, you can postulate, postulate, you can consider the premise of this movie, or you can consider that, that you, you, meaning you and me, humans, diminish each other we make fun of each other we insult each other we put each other down in order to make us feel better about ourselves and like we have we're more than someone else because of their difference or their weakness or something that might be uncontrollably different about them but by putting them down by diminishing them to make them a little bit smaller makes us feel a little bit bigger 
Well said. Thank you very much. Ascully.com, you can go there. You can get this podcast. You can also go to Twitter, Facebook, Instagram to find our social media. I'm A. Scully. She's Sid Talk. You can go to Anchor.fm. No, you can't. It's not called that anymore, Sid Talk. Ooh. You can go to Spotify uh, slash after the show and you'll find our podcast. You'll also find us on iTunes, Amazon Music. So we're any... not on Anchor anymore? Or it's just there is no Spotify? Anchor. They, um, they rebranded as Spotify for podcasters. So do you have to change all your links? I, you don't because they still work. They just left them all working. Got it. Yeah. So, yeah, we're mainly on Spotify is what I'm saying. But we're everywhere else also. So screw you. Well, Anchor is the host. Spotify just delivers the goods to you. Right. Well, also, you can email me at ascolyascolyascolyascolyascolyascolyascolyascolyascolyascolyascolyascolyascolyascolyascolyascolyascolyascolyascolyascolyascolyascolyascolyascolyascolyascolyascolyascolyascolyascolyascolyascolyascoly